Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, 3,000 Atlantis employees set to return to work for the December 10th phased opening. We speak with the resort's president. A man's body discovered just off Mackey Street. Plus, a pregnant nurse shares her battle with COVID-19. News is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joachim. Topping news tonight, 3,000 employees of Atlantis Paradise Island are set to return to work for the resort's December 10th reopening. In an interview with Our News, Atlantis President Audrey Oswell explained how the phase reopening will work and what guests and employees can expect. While the country starts to reopen, we can begin to touch hearts in many ways. After being shut for eight months, Atlantis Paradise Island will reopen its doors just in time for the winter holiday. The phase reopening will see guests enjoy the renovated Royal East Tower guest rooms, Harborside Resort Villas, and the Reef Residential Style Studios and Suites, which is set to reopen on the 17th. We will also be opening other features of the resort. Aquaventure will open, our five miles of beaches will open, over Christmas and New Year's, the Cove Pool and Cabanas will open. Um, many of our Aquaventure features like the Mayan Temple and the Power Tower will open, um, as will many of our restaurants. So there's really no need for our guests to leave resort. Atlantis President Audrey Oswell told our news that while there are some 7,500 employees, 3,000 will return for this phase of the reopening. She spoke with many of those employees via Zoom today. It's been a very long, tough road, um, difficult times for everybody. Atlantis is not unique to this situation, um, but for our team members, we're thrilled to be able to be bringing so many of them back to work on December 10th. We only wish we could bring all of them back much sooner. Over the past few months, there have been several demonstrations with some Atlantis employees requesting that they be given separation packages after being furloughed for months. Oswell explains why the resort hasn't made a decision to carry out any layoffs just yet. It would be premature for us at this time to declare people redundant. You know, we don't know how quickly tourism is going to rebound. And as soon as it does rebound, then we'll be able to make a decision on how quickly we can move into phase two and ultimately phase three, which would be a full reopening of the resort. And only at that time will we be able to make a um, determination of who we need to re who we need to return to work and who we might never return to work but it's premature and it would be irresponsible of us to make that call right now atlantis will operate within a bubble considered a safety zone where everyone is tested before their arrival including employees who will be tested weekly from the airport guests will be whisked off by drivers who will also receive covid 19 tests now for the initial few weeks of reopening Locals won't be able to just walk up and enjoy restaurants and other amenities as they will only be available to registered guests. To make sure that we have all the kinks worked out and that we can keep both tourists and our team members safe. But as soon as possible, shortly thereafter, we will open it up to locals. Oswell added that the resort is ready to get back to business, welcoming guests to a one-of-a-kind experience at Atlantis. This is who we are. Sunny days are ahead. The Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Bill is in its final stages of review, according to Immigration Minister Ellsworth Johnson. The bill, which was released for consultation in 2018, addresses the long-standing problem of statelessness, as well as the rights of Bahamians to pass on their citizenship. Johnson said officials have discovered that some applicants are not stateless. So what I'm finding is that persons don't want what they have. Uh, and so, for instance, in a number of occasions, persons have come to me and say, said to me that they're stateless only to find that, listen, you, you have a designation, but you don't want that designation. You really want Bahamian citizenship. Meanwhile, persons who have been granted legal status in the country but are still living in shanty towns could have that status revo revoked, according to Johnson, who said they should be able to demonstrate they have somewhere to live and will not be a burden. I'm finding that there are too many persons who have been given legal status and find themselves living in a shanty town. Not only that, it was granted while they were living there. 
when you are licensed to be in this country, you must demonstrate that you're not going to be a burden on the public purse and that you have somewhere to live. And to the extent that you and or your employer can't find somewhere to live, well, you have failed to, to comply with a strategic part of the licensing process and that the, your license may have to be revoked. The immigration minister said they have also noticed that many people are applying for Bahamian citizenship to use it as an opportunity or fallback plan. I'm finding too many people who don't intend to live in this country, who are away and who are attempting to send back to get citizenship in case it doesn't work out where they are, they can get it. I asked a young lady, I said, why don't you come and bring these documents to me? She said, she's not here. I said, well, where are you? She said, she's away. I said, well, come home. She said, I can't come. I said, why can't you come? See, if I, can't, if I come, I can't go back. So I said, okay. I said, do you intend to live, work, and contribute to the farm? She said, I don't intend to live here. Well, you don't, you're not entitled. A man's partially decomposed body was found inside a building on Mackey Street this morning. His longtime friend made the shocking discovery. Berthy McDermott reports. A strong odor emanating from Martin's moving storage and customs brokerage and a swarm of flies greeted police officers as they responded to reports of a partially decomposed body discovered inside the building on Mackey Street this morning. Police press liaison officer Audley Peters gave these details on the scene. Sometime around 9.20 a.m., police received reports of an odor emanating from a building situated on Mackey Street. Officers responded and on their arrival, with the assistance of a key holder, they gained entry. While in the building, officers discovered the body of a male partially decomposed lying on the bed. At present, the evidence does not suggest foul play. However, we're awaiting an autopsy's report to determine the cause of death. He said the man's family owns the building. The body was reportedly found by the man's longtime friend Matthew Mitchell, who says he is 58-year-old Jeff Martin. Started out a couple of times. He didn't respond. So I went to the window after seeing loads of flies and I looked inside and there he was. That simple. I just never thought that I would be faced with this kind of situation. You do not expect these sorts of things to happen to your friends. You expect things to happen in a more natural way. Family members on the scene declined to comment, but Mitchell said they are shaken by Martin's death. He described the father of two, whom he claims lived inside the building, as a kind and warm person. A super guy. Athletic, friendly, warm. Give his last to, to those he loved and cared for. Really good guy. Uh, very, very sad to have found him in the way that I did. Uh, that's something that will probably never, ever leave me. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Works Minister Desmond Bannister warning that if Bahamas Power and Light does not bring in some money, it can't keep the generators going. Bannister said during the good times, BPL usually faces up to $100 million a month in arrears. Georgia Bain has more. Minister of Works Desmond Bannister is urging customers who find themselves in arrears with their power bills to go in and make arrangements at their local BPL office. According to Bannister, disconnections could continue as long as those power bills continue to climb. If BPL don't get uh, some money in, they cannot keep the generators going. It's a, it's a simple fact of like, economic life. So I don't want to give you figures for that reason because we do have people who will deliberately push it even when they can pay. Amid criticism over electricity disconnections in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has left thousands without a job, Bannister insisted that BPL records an average of 90 million in outstanding payments on a good day. In good times, BPL usually has $90 million each month in, 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 a, in, in, in arrears, $90 million to $100 million. Every month, BPL has to buy fuel every single month. They have to keep power on for the rest of us. And so they have to be able to put financial agreements in place for people who haven't been able to pay. That's all they want. They, they are just like the rest of us. They have tremendous amount of empathy. And I would urge anybody who has a challenge to just contact them. Though the minister maintained the company is not conducting a disconnection exercise, up to October 23rd, the power company disconnected over 3,000 customers. Bannister stressed the importance of bringing in revenue. BPL can't go to the public treasury and say, I need $10 million this month. I need $20 million this month for fuel. They have to buy fuel. They have to pay their staff. They have to continue to exist. And the only way they're going to exist is if they get some revenue in. The company can't send the employees down to 
social services and say, go and get some food. They still have to pay the employees because those people are still working. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. Some small business owners on Eleuthera say it's unfair that Spanish wells in Harbor Island have been exempted from the latest restrictions imposed on that island. Jared Higgs has more. How is it that it's fair when we all want, we all want island? 41-year-old Demetrius Johnson, a barber in Governor's Harbor, Eleuthera, doesn't agree with Harbor Island and Spanish wells avoiding the latest restrictions imposed on mainland Eleuthera. If it was to be that way, then perhaps Spanish wells in Harbor Island need their own spot on the dashboard. Neither does gas station and car rental business owner Wellington Johnson. The father of seven says on top of the restrictions being unfair, they came at a crucial time for the island's economy. you got to consider the tourist brought up because once you mess that up in the beginning, it's going to be messed up through the whole season. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announced new restrictions for Eleuthera on Sunday, including a 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew during the week and a 24-hour curfew on weekends. Johnson and others think the lockdown is harsh and plan to have a protest today. However, they say they're waiting for approval from Commissioner of Police Paul Roll. Johnson, a barber and married father of two, says ultimately he thinks curfews are more effective than lockdowns. The curfews probably were necessary. The time of the curfew I don't necessarily agree with because it's 6 p.m. is, I think, really too early. It doesn't give people ample time to get home from work and to be able to transition. I think 9 p.m. would probably be a better time. About 30 people who were stuck in Eleuthera were granted permission to charter flights back to New Providence. Their problems appear to be solved, but those left on mainland are nervous that they'll have a repeat of March. All the reservations and the bookings was canceled. Reporting for our news. I am Jared Higgs. We've got a lot more news, but first, meteorologist Greg Thompson gives us a first look at our weekday weather forecast. Good evening, Greg. Thanks, Kyle. This is your first look at weather being brought to you tonight by Bahamas First. What's first for you comes first for us. Current conditions outside our studios, temperatures in the low 80s, partly cloudy skies, the breezes kicking up out there still. Your winds out of the southeast, 30 knots, feels like temperature in the low 80s. Satellite-wise around the area, we still have some feeder bands from Tropical Storm Ada that's producing some cloudy conditions as well as some showers and thunderstorms across the area. Improving conditions as the system continues to move towards the north. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come, as some hotel workers head back to work, others feel hopeless. Plus, retailers happy to have customers back in stores. Stay tuned. Just when you thought the air would end drear, Rev came through with magic and holiday chair. Our cash back will double making more spirits rise, with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online, just sign up for Trio and pay your Rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Feel the Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. You're watching Our News, welcome back. While welcoming the news that the two major resorts will be welcoming guests next month, the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union is expressing concern over those properties that have yet to set a reopening date. Julian Gray reports. Wood said overall the reopening announcement is a glimmer of hope signaling a rebound of the country's economy after a gloomy few months brought on by the pandemic. Altogether, he says it bodes well not only for hoteliers but also for small business owners. What happens at the mom and pop store, what happens at the gas station, what happens at the food store, the, the retail stores, everything. Um, and I believe the, the retailers now should realize how important um, the hospitality industry is. Wood said Atlantis employees are happy that they'll no longer have to depend on assistance programs. They would want to be able to take care of themselves as opposed to relying on assistance program here and there. Um, you know, Bahamians, um, we in, in general are some proud people, but we want to be able to do for ourselves. 
And with the hotels opening, what it does is it gives them some hope. Both Bahama and Atlantis say they'll be testing their employees regularly when they reopen, which Wood said is encouraging, as safety is of the utmost importance. He encouraged workers to follow those guidelines, as he said, their lives and livelihoods may depend on it. Meanwhile, hotel workers at Millia and other properties still in limbo about reopening are not feeling so hopeful, according to the hotel union president, who said many of them have mounting bills and not knowing when they'll return to work is discouraging. The thing is, well, you know, this one is opening. Bahama has said this, and but, you know, our property have, they have not, has not said um, what is going to happen to us. And so they kind of felt they kind of they, they feel kind of left out. Wood said he's been trying to get a date from the Malia, Hilton and Ocean Club resorts, but those properties may be monitoring travel demand. He added concerns have only been compounded for Malia workers who have experienced challenges getting assistance payments. The company is saying something, NIB is saying something. So there's a kind of tripartite person with the employer, um, NIB and the government. You know the union is on the outside of that, but um, we're going to do what, what we can to get information. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. In other news, a pregnant nurse is opening up about her battle with COVID-19. She told our Jared Hicks the experience has made her a bit weary. Registered nurse Jamia Cooper knew carrying a pregnancy to term during a pandemic would be a unique challenge for her. I wasn't sure if this would be a viable pregnancy because of COVID. Cooper battled the virus back in July. She says she was five months pregnant when she tested positive. Naturally, her COVID and pregnancy symptoms collided, and the healthcare worker admits she wasn't always sure which was which. I completely lost all appetite. I couldn't eat. I couldn't keep anything down. I was vomiting. Even as if I took a sip of water, I would vomit the water up. Cooper was bedridden for days, but eventually recovered. She admits that the experience has scarred her a bit. While the 28-year-old didn't require hospitalization, she did go on a drip at the South Beach Clinic. As she gets closer to her due date, she has one main fear. I'm so, I would say, overly cautious because I don't want to, to be reinfected. Um, I was even paranoid about it. Another concern of recovered persons is the lingering virus symptoms. Even after a person tests negative, 24-year-old Glenisha Albury battled the virus in late October and has since tested negative. However, the effects linger. I'm still battling with side effects from COVID. I'm still having sometimes chest pain. Sometimes it's very hard to walk upstairs. I ever get my lungs back at, you know, 100%. As for Cooper, with cases and hospitalizations on the decline, the soon-to-be mom and nurse is more optimistic. However, she's still encouraging other women in her situation to be vigilant. My best advice to a pregnant woman is, you know, take extra precautions. Reporting for our news. I'm Jared Higgs. Customers enter stores for the first time in weeks after Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announced the end of curbside shopping. It was a relief for business owners who said the restrictions caused sluggish sales. Bertha McDermott reports. Store owners breathing a sigh of relief in the wake of the Prime Minister's decision to ease restrictions, including curbside shopping, which significantly impacted sales. I think it has dropped tremendously to a point where I'll, I would say probably 50, 50 to 60 percent in sales. So there was a decrease in sales, but like I said, we made the most of it. We really pushed people to shop online. That was a huge help for us. Um, so it kind of saved the day in the end. But yeah, it's, it's good to be back to regular in-store shopping. The Bahamas Federation of Retailers welcomed the decision to resume in-store shopping and lifted weekend lockdowns and predicted that many businesses would have closed if they were unable to resume regular operations. Residents reacted positively to the Prime Minister's announcement, with some saying shopping using the curbside method posed a challenge. When I had to use curbside, it was horrible. Like the other day, I was shopping with my family to get, um, to get shoes and shirts and pants. And we couldn't even go look at them. That's we difficult have. because it, it, it like it, it hindering you. You really want to go inside and you want to look and see what you want to buy. And it's it kind of softens you, but you know the reason why. I see what they're trying to do, but I don't think we have it down pack like we ought to. So there's a lot of glitches in the system. Hence, persons are waiting longer than they have to. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Well, thanks, Berthony. Still to come, how one group is celebrating hidden heroes. Stay tuned. So the project actually pays itself back. Correct. They set up a, a, 
um, at the conference. Uh, uh, more uh, the school. As a journalist, I always have to focus on the facts, and sometimes that means going to investigate for myself. On the record, Thursdays at 8 p.m. right here on RTV. Nominations are open for Character Day Bahamas 2020. The worldwide initiative seeks to recognize hidden heroes within our communities. Coordinator Charlene Carey says with so many people doing good without ever being noticed, the initiative celebrates those who give so much, especially at a time like this. The hero can be a youth or an adult. So we're looking for under 18 and adult heroes in any sphere. And that's the other thing. So if you are in a certain community, you might think, oh, everybody knows about person Jane Doe because she's well known in my community, artist community, environmental community, engineer, whatever that person is. But that person may not be well known to the general public and may still be hidden. To nominate your hidden hero, log on to characterdaybahamas.org. The deadline for nomination is November 15th. The people that move our, our country, shape our country, by sometimes even doing small things, the people that motivate us, uh, some of the ways that we see those character strengths being manifested in our community. So we wanted to celebrate that. And that's a look at news. Marcellus Hall has all things sports right after this. Stay tuned. Just when you thought the year would end drill, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirit tries with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. Just sign up for Trio and pay your rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Field of Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. In sports, the New England Patriots and New York Jets battle right down to the wire in Monday Night Football. Marcellus Hall has that. Well, the NFL's Week 9 coming to a close last night with Monday Night Football. Two teams struggling for wins, but turning in a pretty good performance for fans to enjoy. Let's take a look. Patriots and Jets meeting up on a Monday night as Week 9 comes to a close. Patriots trying to break a four-game losing skid. Jets, meanwhile, still looking for their first win of the season. Trailing 3-0, Patriots Cam Newton with the five-yard run here into the end zone. Pats now go up 7-3. Jets would answer. Joe Flacco, he connects with Perriman on a 50-yard reception. That put the Jets back on top. Jamison Crowder's 20-yard catch right here. That puts the Jets up 20-10 at the half. Third quarter action, Patriots Rex Burkhead. He takes the handoff from a one-yard out. Makes it 20 to 17. Then it's Perriman again, this time on a 15 yard grab from Flacco. Jets up 27 17, heading into the fourth. In the fourth quarter, Patriots Cam Newton, he takes the quarterback keeper into the end zone. That ties the game at 27. And then, with three seconds on the clock, former Jets kicker Nick Folk with the 51 yarder. That seals the win. Patriots with the victory, 30 to 27. So there you have it. Of course, we'll give you details as we get closer to week number nine coming up this Thursday. Until then, I'm Marcellus Hall reporting for our news. And that's a look at news. We throw it back to meteorologist Greg Thompson for the extended weather forecast. Thanks again, Kai. In our second look at weather being brought to you tonight by InfoGrow, around the area on our satellite, we still have tropical storm made out there in the Gulf of Mexico near Cuba, producing some rain bands across the area, showers and thunderstorms associated with that system still affecting the islands. Ada combined with a high pressure system in the Atlantic will continue to produce the winds across the area, so rough seas will continue. Your boating forecast for all areas tonight through tomorrow, your winds will be out of the southeast, 15 to 25 knots, rough seas, four to six feet over the ocean, up to 10 feet along Atlantic shorelines. Your low tide will be at 9.37 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast.
A look now to extended forecast through Sunday. That's a look at our weather. Have a great night, everyone. And now your Royal Fidelity Market Recap takes a look at today's markets. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by Royal Fidelity, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. We will see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a good Tuesday evening, Bahamas.